Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Airport CEO, episode number five in our little series. Well, we've come a little bit of a ways. It's still a pretty humble airport, but now it has, you know, fully operational general aviation, has fully operational small commercial flights. Before we really make the next step, uh, which we want to make, I mean, the next step for us is to get medium aircraft handling. Right now we're still gated behind using the we're picking up the extended commercial license for additional flights. I do have additional flights I want to pump in even today. So we'll get to that in a second now that our additional aircraft stands are set up. We're not utilizing them. And this is another trick I wanted to show anyway. If you ever want, if you're really desperate for money, but you're flight capped, there is a, uh, I hate to say it, but it is just a, a cheat. <laughs> I guess it's a cheat. There's a workaround for this. Um, if you work backwards in time from the furthest point away that you can, so for example, if we started on Tuesday and we filled up as much as we could, if you go back to the day before it um, and you put in flights in the time spots you didn't put them in for Tuesday, you will actually, those will trickle over onto Tuesday as well. So although Tuesday may have been filled up by 25, when you go back to Monday, those flights are going to be daily for usually like this one, for example, is five flights. So this will be for five days after the first day you put it down for. So if you put it down on Monday, it would also be on Tuesday, bringing you to 26 out of 25. And you can just keep doing that. Like if you only use the first four stands to get up to 25 and then you use the other three stands to, you know, for the previous days, you can easily get yourself over 30, 40. I mean, <laughs> I've done it before. Anyways, um, so we don't really need to do that, but we'll be just incidentally doing that because apparently I've already booked Friday and Thursday and Friday, but I don't know why I have four spots open. So this is going to end up being more than uh, 25 flights for Thursday and Friday. Um, but I guess I should tackle first. And some of these are, by the way, off. And you can see, obviously, off in terms of when they should be going. This one's on the correct time scale, but this is like on the old, not very well organized Tortuga time scale. So this one, um, let's see, this is the correct one. And this is like the old one, incorrect. So this should be, the next one should be 1710, not 1720. It depends on where we want on the line. So that means if we go back here, okay, it's, it's full anyway. So yeah, we don't want to put one there because there's one there on Thursday. But we know that there's nothing down here, so we can always just go and add things where we want um, on this one. So the times we fly are 5, 9, 13, 17, and 21. Um, so this is looks like it's going to be a 13, and it's 0, 10, 20, 30, so the next one's 40. So let's make this one at 1340, and that will be at the appropriate time. Should be at the appropriate time for Thursday, Friday. There it is. Look at that. Perfect. 1330, 1340. So good. We're adding them to the correct place, you know, eventually that... Uh, this all work out and i have five flights at the same time here i'd prefer to try not to overload my airport too much so i'm going to put the next ones oh I, we don't have any more also do note that we are at a hundred percent airline satisfaction that's one of the other things i want to just pay a little bit of a mind to in this episode is trying to get some of these other ratings up we have this one the infrastructure quality is a little bit poor i think i'm not sure but that that's a combination of having only using, here we're using uh, asphalt and not concrete. So we can upgrade these to concrete after one of the next, you know, one of the upcoming research things, which we'll do. And then once we do have that, I will upgrade them to concrete because the, I think the, I think the maintenance cost for that is even lower. Um, anyways, we don't really care about general aviation for much longer anyhow. We probably will get rid of them and these will become like, these will be, stay as small aircraft stands, but they'll p become commercial and we'll do some kind of like remote bus out. I don't know. I have ideas and, you know, in fact, we'll probably never get to that point in this series. But just to like theory craft a little bit, we could put some little bus stand over here, have people, you know, leaving and getting on buses to go arrive at their correct aircraft. And then we could have our, um, our just the refueling. We'd probably have to buy an extra refueling van at that point. I mean, we're not going to use the Avgas anymore just the A1, so we, would, we wouldn't really need this fuel depot, but uh, this one would be in much higher demand. So we might even have to up this one from 10% resupply rate to something higher in order to avoid 
running dry. Okay, but that's all, again, a lot of theory crafting. So, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things I wanted to pay attention to, though, is trying to improve these ratings. And, you know, that's the only one we can improve for general aviation. For airline satisfaction, we need baggage handling, I think, before anything else can improve here. Although, again, airline infrastructure quality could be improved, but we're otherwise doing pretty well. Passengers don't really like the quality of things, and I think that this is for a couple of reasons. I think mostly it's staff-related. Um, we can also... We really should make an effort to improve things like bathrooms and all that. And hey, by the way, I, this is one of the big things I wanted to talk about. I mean, it's not, it's a very small thing. It's purely aesthetics, but I think that this airport really needs some color. <laughs> it needs something other than concrete floors everywhere. But um, let me start off with the staff stuff. So right now, I think we may even have a demand for it. Yeah, service technicians. So basically when there's stuff that is breaking or going wrong, I guess service technicians are needed to fix it, not janitors. So that's why we need a service technician. That's not the right one, there it is. So let's just try to get somebody as usual who is pretty cheap. This one looks pretty good, 9.4. And you know what, I think that's our winner. So we'll get you, service, service. I wanna just train you up a little bit. 12.5, fantastic, Omid, get to work, my dear friend. Um, I also think that we'll pick up another administrator because we are at, I think we're at five. And we're going to want six for the next, I think even the research we're doing right now is capable of doing six. So let's go ahead and look for another administrator. This is the same old song and dance. In fact, I'm pretty sure that we can just hire Adrian Garcia here. Um, and then train him up. Yeah, I think we'll just do this. We'll just keep things simple. Okay, good. 14.1 for, you know, three quarters. I, I'm happy with that. Then we'll go over to our operations and we'll increase this because I normally forget, but this time, maybe at least just this one time, I didn't. All right, I should have been running at speed three through all that anyway. I mentioned that we're going to want to do this uh, emergency response station tutorial stuff. And it's true from the perspective that it is supposed to be the next thing before you do the medium flights and all that. But it's, it's really nothing but a money drain. Um, it's very unusual for you to actually need any of these emergen re emergency response vehicles. I've seen it happen. However, most often, when you have any kind of problems, an aircraft hangar is enough. I've had it situations where a plane does catch on fire with an, you know, running into a bird, and that'll be one of the things that we're supposed to do with the emergency response is get some some bird repellent <laughs> on, the fr on, the, on the runway. And we will, but... Um, let me start off by first, before I forget, adding a couple more bus stops. And we probably need a bus shelter because it just looks nice. Um, but let's get those two down. I want two more cars and two more taxis. Car, car, taxi, taxi. And there we go. That just looks a little bit nicer. And get this. File that to the end of the there. And it's a little bit of little something for our... Yeah, we're going to run into these small plays. I don't know why, but... Do we get up to... Oh, I, I didn't finish filling this out. So, first of all, let's do this. Oh, yeah. We didn't have any other flights, but they're starting to come in now. So, let's make sure we're doing this right. This is um, 17, 10, 20, 30. So, 10, 17, 30. But do we have one there? So, let's do 1740, just because I know for sure there is no flight at 1740 there on the next day. It looks like we would have been okay to do, oh, nope. No, we're not okay to do that because Friday we are booking that time slot. Okay, so I'm glad we did not do that. And I don't even know what happens. I think it just gets delayed one by one day. It doesn't, I don't think that they actually have a problem merging. I think it just gets, you know, it's not gonna come that day, but it will the next. We have 25 contractors, by the way, and I, I feel like this is actually a good number. They get everything done pretty quickly. You don't notice that there's not enough contractors. But I do notice that these are facing the wrong way. So we'll switch that. And I don't understand the traffic flow exactly. It appears that everyone favors the bottom path here. And then they only go up into these slots. They'll just like dive over two lanes. Like that bus did the exact opposite of what I was saying. So maybe it's just completely random. Like, did you see that bus? It went up here to make the turn over here. I'm not really sure what kind of pathfinding algorithm we're using here but it does have some nonsense to it. 
Well, let's not pay too much attention to that. Not going to be a big deal. It's just going to make us upset anyway. Let's keep this uh, repaired. Okay, next course of action. I guess we can go ahead and run off the emergency response thing. Because actually, what's happening right now is we, we are at one of my... <laughs> I don't know why I'm calling them this, but the plateaus. Where we are, be able, we are able to make a lot of money right now. So we're pulling in. I mean, I'm quoting this air quotes around a lot. But a lot for us. I mean, this is the most amount of money that we've been making. So you can see, oh wow, we're up to current hours up to 15,000 or whatever. At some point we'll refuel this tank and it'll eat into our profits in a huge way, but hey, that's a... I like when I when I see 18,000 an hour positive. So obviously it's not it's not that. It's not that good, but it's pretty good. Um, one of the things we could be starting to do is future plan. And we do already have unlocked the security mediums. No, we don't have that. Okay, that's what I will unlock with this one. Does this unlock the medium stuff? Where did I get the medium from? Was it? Is it from the medium commercial thing? I have to unlock a second project group just so I can, not so I can ever pick anything there, just so I can look at the research. Yeah, I don't know if any of these... It's funny, that we actually cannot click on it and figure out what it is that they give us. Just rest your cursor, I guess. Let's run away lights. Yeah, so we don't really care about that. Bird strike prevention system. That's the one I'm gonna, I will be putting down. I mean, this uh, tutorial is a little bit goofy from the perspective that it's actually gonna, wait, did we get up to 25? No, we didn't. Now we have more flights. We, we can probably, no, I don't think we can fit one in. Yeah, <laughs> if we want, we can just stick one on. How many, I, I wanna pick a flight that only happens, okay. One that happens only twice is fine. We'll just stick this one at the very end of the day. It's only gonna happen twice. We'll just we're gonna let this go. Put it way the hell down there, <laughs> just to sneak it in, to get us up to 24 to make a little bit of extra money. I'm not sure how people would even get, you know, how, how people would even book that. We just scheduled a flight, and you have four hours to find it on whatever method you use to find flights, book it, and come to our airport. It seems a little bit difficult. But it's an option that exists in the game, so we'll take advantage of it. Yeah, okay, so emergency response, let's just, let's just do it. I, I think this is basically a money sink. And we're not hurting for money, but when we want to do a big construction project, we will feel the difference of the emergency response or not. Because this is going to be all told about $500 an hour that we're going to add to our, to our expenses. It's going to be about $250 for the two buildings. And then it's going to be up 350, I think. Yeah, 350 for the cars. So it's 600 dollars an hour <clears throat> to get um, all the different things for this little tutorial thing. Not not great, considering the small hangar, which satisfies most of the requirements that you'll need for emergency responses, is only like 20 dollars an hour. So it's a pretty big investment. In fact, I may just want to cut away and let's earn a little bit more money, and I'll come back when I feel like. It's okay for us to build this stuff. Well, mayday, mayday, mayday. I just got this about, well, two minutes ago in game time. Mayday, mayday, mayday. GA flight N1581. Thank God it's a GA flight. Uh, is experiencing a bird strike emergency. Refusing or failing to correctly handle this will result in, you know, a big fine, like 50,000 or something. Anyways, we want to find a stand for them and get them repaired. They were like something, which one are they? Which one's my bird strike? Oh, they are not yet there, I guess? 1581 is what we're looking for. We have people literally taking off, so apparently we don't care about this <laughs> aircraft coming in with a bird strike problem. Get out of the way, you ding dong. Unless we're already handling it. Do we have somebody in here? Nope. Okay, bird strike, bird strike. Is this us? I'm telling you, this bird strike. Um, excuse me, it, they never came. Well, yeah, so we got a handling rating of F and we're fine 25,000. I take this one under protest. 
we didn't have any opportunity to do anything. I didn't even see the aircraft. Like, where is this thing? It didn't show up. Oh, were we supposed to prevent people from taking off or something? I've never had to do that before. Why would we not just give them priority? I shouldn't have to manually tell the traffic control people to prioritize an emergency. Please tell me you don't have to do it that way. There should just be an option. I mean, it should just be like the built-in default that somebody who has a, a big problem like that gets priority to the runway. That's just the way it is. Hmm. But maybe I was supposed to do something and, I, and this hasn't gone away yet either. Yeah, it says start time and end time was like at 118. Did something is fishy there, but we're gonna suffer the bad rating for it, unfortunately. Which is kind of a bummer. Anyway, I guess uh go back to making money. Okay, well, um extended commercial uh, license has been completed. We now have the ability to get a, a bigger ATC, which we do want to do. I think we'll probably put that in. I don't know if we'll should we just do it right away? Probably. Put it right here and then bulldoze the old one after that. We'll put it in, sure. Um, and the other thing that that gave us was like airport lounges, which I don't plan to use. I guess it's one of these. Yeah, airline lounge. Um, we're not going to use that, at least right now. But you know what? Let's also just take this moment, besides, before I forget, queuing up the next research, which I do think is going to be medium aircraft permit. So this will give us the medium stuff. Yeah, that we definitely want this next. And thankfully, it'll allow up to six people. Let's do a little bit of staff management for just one second before we move on. So I have upgraded my security officers to get a little bit of a better rating. I don't know why, but we have a 100% operational rating despite that whatever it was. Maybe we weren't even charged the 25,000 since we got the email, but I didn't see any, we were our, you know, our reputation wasn't nicked for it. And since I don't know if it even triggered based on the fact that, you know, something looks a little bit funny about the log. Who knows? Maybe it didn't. Anyway, um, not service security officer. Is that what I wanted? I think I do want a security officer. Say we're short on janitors. Um, yeah, I do. I think I do want to pick up a second janitor because I mean they're very inexpensive anyway. So why not just get somebody for five like this and then train them to be a little bit better? Okay, switch, swap over to janitor and train them up. Yeah, sure, six point seven. I mean these guys are both great. What else did I want to do? I, there was something in, I just can't remember. We got four of these, which by the way you need to be trained a little bit. I'm still completely unsure about what the training does, how much of an impact it has, but let's just go ahead and ramp people up a little bit more. Looks like the budgets are pretty cheap on these guys. I probably did a good job hiring you know, the cheaper end and then training them up. That's the way to do it, in my opinion. Executives. Okay, well, let's not get to the executives yet. Uh, okay, the next step is let's actually go ahead and do the... Um... Oh, wait. So that has a buffet table, though. Because that might be worth getting. People are complaining about food. I mean, people, passengers are not super impressed with this. And, uh, you know, we can, I can do a little bit of improvement on things here. In fact, I probably should do that now. Um, okay. Wow. Oh, gosh. Oh, zoom out. I got to censor this. That is, okay. So I, I see what they mean by we need more than one janitor. <laughs> But I just hired him, so just give him a moment to arrive. I'm so sorry that their first job is going <laughs> to called in for this. But uh, let's go to the bathrooms and actually... <laughs> I, want, I always meant to add an extra toilet to these. I just was doing an experiment to see if the bottom ones would be used, if you have all six tightly compact like this, and I think that they are. It doesn't look like people need to dry their hands. I don't know if this is just purely aesthetics. They do rinse their hands. But I don't actually see them drop by and... Like, he's repairing this, or is he... What are you? A janitor. See, so <laughs> my dear friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Claudia, who I think is probably the new hire, <laughs> got the uh, hiring date. Day 12, year one. Yeah, she did. <laughs> I like how this happened, that he slightly let the new hire... <laughs> 
deal with the mess. Anyway, um, I always thought about doing three toilets on each side here, but oh my goodness, what are people doing? Ah, just zoom away, Tortuga, don't even look. Okay, let's go on, let's change subjects. Move on to the emergency response stuff. We have almost 1.5 million, I think that's going to be enough to get things started, so just go to security quickly before anything terrible happens. Let's build this. Now, I like to have the fire department closer to the air um, the, the um, runway, and I still want to leave room in this corner for the, the concrete garage, although frankly this should probably take priority, but you know what, it should. But we don't have, yeah, it's not going to though, because we don't have a means of of replacing this, um, the nav, the av gas. So we'll put that there, and then this one can be below it. I don't really care. Um, this is a no. Um, yeah, we'll just put it on this side. I don't know what we would do with the bottom two there anyway. Is there any reason why we would put this? Let's just put it down there. Who cares? I don't really care. So we might want to put a road there or something. Who knows? Maybe a second entrance, um, maybe we move this over here, who knows? I'm not sure. I guess we can't do that because this would, would need a place for the actual checkpoint. I do want to redo this at some point, I mean with all of our parking lots full, what I keep telling myself I'm going to do is build a crosswalk over to sidewalk over here and then put some extra parking lots. It just makes sense. We can slide these down closer to the checkpoints and then, you know, people can actually use this as part of the parking lots. I don't know why we haven't done that. In fact. Why? There's no time like the present, as they say. So let's just get this going on. Delivery site. Let's move that all the way. Okay, let's move it there. And let's get the contractor site to be here. And then now that we have two of those, I think we can delete this guy. But is that enough room already for a parking lot? It is. It is. So we could actually use this here now. And then that would work, that would work. Cause then we just need sidewalk over to cross across here. And I would consider this probably long-term parking, considering the fact that uh, we don't, it'll take people a little bit of a ways to get there. But these are just making us so much money. I don't see any reason not to do this. So we will just do it, just do it. And the contractors are gonna be like, hooray, there's a parking lot right next to us. Um, that they can't use, of course, because they bus in, so maybe they won't be so excited about it. And we'll need a medium for this. Look at that. Should work perfectly. And I think heat map wise, that should mean people can walk there just fine. Good. Okay, um, turn off the heat map. Yeah. Now, this is going to get ridiculous. So we have to purchase these things. And now, mind you, I don't know if you noticed the cost of these, but this is 150 operating, 200. So there's our. 350 for that, so it's 350, 350. It's actually 700 to get all this stuff down. Very expensive. So here's our 100, our 150, and then our 100. And again, it does befuddle me that a fire truck is less per hour than an ambulance. I severely doubt that that's realistic, but let's delete that one. Just I don't think we need it. They can all hang out over here. And should we have gotten more? I don't know, but okay, bring them on in, purchase these things. That's, we're done, that should happen soon. I guess we can watch the pathfinding and see if it all works out or not. It's the fire truck. No problems. And we're missing an ambulance maybe? Oh, no, I guess not, we're all done. Yeah, good, we got everything. Okay, so yeah, we probably need to repair this. It just always gets that way. But speaking of that like bird crash thing, we, there is a way to prevent that. We go over to upgrades here and we grab the bird prevention system. Note that we already have the poppy lights and we also, we also added the, the runway or whatever stuff over here. The way these work is there's gonna be a, a radius that they protect and you I, I have no idea how it works, how the bird, where the birds fly, when the aircraft is supposed to be capable of being hit by a bird. But I do it in a simple um, three pattern. Three patterns. So one over there, I just do up and to the right one. And that shouldn't be blocking that, hopefully. 
And then I put one right in the middle, which normally I just count. There should be, I think, six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll want this one right here, I think. There. And when those get built, there's a radius. There's also a power rating, and uh, you can, uh, and an, a maintenance cost. And you can increase the power to them in order to get a little bit more radius. It is more expensive to do that. Um, they start at pretty much the optimal, and then anything beyond that, it's, it's a, you know, a little bit more money. But I have found that with this three thing config configuration, if we just upgrade this from three from thirty to 50, um, this is going to be the perfect overlap with everything. So you can see that right now, this one is basically at this middle dash, and that one's over here. So we want this one to get over that, and I think at 50 it basically does. Yeah. So now you can see that there's almost, almost overlap. So if a bird happens to <laughs> really thread the needle there, they're going to they could cause some damage, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. In fact, I'm not even sure if um, aircraft on the runway can hit a bird, but I think I've seen that, and I'm just going to be protective of it. It's one extra bird prevention system, which is an extra 15,000, so it's pretty expensive, but anyway. So now we're supposed to create these security routes, which they're going to have us delete in the end anyway. It's very silly. Plus, I don't really want my people patrolling because they're all... I'm not going to have patrols. I'm actually just going to have people um, working the stands. So that's that one. They're going to want us to do a car one. And just go around a big circle, I guess. And then I'm going to delete you anyway, because that's just what we do. Save, and then hey, you know what you can do? You can delete them. Okay, fine. If you say so. All that hard work for nothing. I wouldn't mind leaving the police car patrol, like there's nothing else the police car is doing anyway, except it's gonna get, it's actually gets in the way and blocks the fuel truck sometimes. So I'd rather them just sit at home. Like don't do anything, it's actually worse for me if you do. Now, everything's all set, they want us to do the medium check-in and please, please tell me, thank goodness, that I actually assigned people to the medium aircraft permit. So the next step for us is while we're going to have a slightly reduced, okay, you know, I would say even significantly reduced, $700 an hour reduced amount of income, I'll just step away, do some repairs on these things, and uh, we'll be ready when the medium aircraft check-in stuff is ready. Um, by the way, just thought I'd notice, or that I've noticed, and I just thought I'd let you know that these hobby lights are facing backwards, which just drives me absolutely nuts. So those are going to be <laughs> removed and... How did that even happen? They fit right here. I think I'll just put them right in front, it doesn't really matter. Delete the old ones. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. What else is happening? I guess nothing. Um, yeah. Great! Medium aircraft permit was just finished. So we're going to start a new project on this. I, I think I'm going to want to get this uh, program group one to just allow I think that doesn't that allow multiple no no, no I, yeah does this allow multiple things or does that lead to the thing which allows for multiple things um, do I need anything else floor construction terminal floors stairs escalators conveyor belt escalator jetway stand upgrade I don't think we need any of those um, remote stand don't need that although that eventually we may want that Subway entrance would be kind of cool. This would increase the number of people who could get to us without needing to use all the all the other means of transportation. Cabin cleaning don't need. Catering don't need. Belt loader don't need. Yeah, I don't need those ones in blue. Um, fuel tanks. I think we already... Is this unlock large fuel tanks or something? Or is extra storage or something? I don't think we need it. Yeah, so this just leaves me with this. And this only allows... Uh, <laughs> three people to be on the project, which means we're going to have... Yeah, we really need to unlock a different project group. Um, and I think that that might become unlocked subsequently, but I don't know. Anyway, um, with the medium stuff, we want to immediately as expand our security. I think that the ha having the medium security point, this is just a lot faster. 
And my vision for this, and I'm thinking I'm going to start to enact it now, although we won't get to medium commercial flights until next episode, is I want to put one here and then one facing the other way on the other side, and they both funnel people in, like, the queuing is left to right, and, but eventually they go north and to get into the security area. This does take a, you know, this does clip space from the bottom area, which may not be necessary, um, but the thing is the wall's there, and, you know, the only way I can get around that is by delete, putting new wall and then deleting it, I think that it's fine if we just sneak it in there. I'm like, what is down here going to be used for anyway, right? Most of the stuff we want, like shops and all that, I think we want in the actual terminal. Um, that's not the way I view airports, by the way. I view airports as it's nice to have, like, a whatever, stuff outside of security too. But I don't think it's the way the ratings work in this game. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. That may be, that may not be correct. Um, but for now, let's see, what do we want to do? I think we'll start with one entrance and exit here. So that is one. And then we need one and then the other one. Okay, so now we can put two medium security things down. One here and one here. Okay, then we're gonna need walls because this is now supposed to be a secure area. So we'll put the walls there first before we delete. And that's fine. And I think that we'll put up some fancy hedging or something like that. Because this is the only place you're allowed to get in there. And this is also going to take a lot of security guards. So that's another thing we should consider. But as soon as this is built, I will delete the walls here. Since I'm sure that we won't be leaking people in or out. Okay, good. That should be done now. Very good, very good. Okay, so now we establish that as a secure area once more. So that people can actually walk through. We'll just make sure that this is all secure area. Good. Now that's saying that there's not enough people to operate this, and that's that's completely true. We do need more people to operate it. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and start to get hedging down, which I think is going to look appropriate right here and right here and maybe I don't know, I, I just, I think this increases the, the how much people like the airport so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in it's missing a couple walls there too but they're probably going and getting that stuff now anyway uh, okay, so the security... Oh, actually, go back to the hedging. Looks like we may want hedging here as well, because I, I guess the it's not going to go all the way up there. All right, let's actually build the queue. I don't know why I didn't... I think I want to do this, though. There we go. That's... I think that's going to be enough. And yes, we do want the hedging. We're going to hedge our bets. Been waiting the whole series to make that joke. Uh, yeah, we'll put this here. And let's see how the hedging works on this side. I mean, how the queue works on this side. Yeah, it, it's probably supposed to do that, which is kind of hideous. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to leave it like that, though. We have lots of... Look at all those hedges. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Okay, that's fine. So this is our new entrance to security, at least a new entrance to security. And I can double up on this. I can put these wherever I want. Um, I also probably want more bathrooms and such like that. But let's also start color coding things. I think that this is very helpful, not just to pretend that there's some aesthetic appeal to the airport, but also just to be able to distinguish between different zones. Um, I tend to think that the security zone itself would be do we want matt there i mean i'm trying to think like act what's the reasonable thing to have because you you would want something that could deal with liquids and all that and and is robust it's going to be walked on a lot wood probably isn't what you're looking for no this is considered what clinker i'm not 
not sure what that even means. Or concrete. Now that might be a little bit ugly. Like a marble thing is probably appropriate here. Whatever of these two is lighter. Uh, let me put this down. That is pretty dark. And that is better. Okay, so we'll do this. This will be our security color. Wow, it's maybe not the best. <laughs> oh well, I'm just gonna go with it. And the Q, I don't even know if we want the Q in that, but we'll probably put the Q in something else. No, no, the Q actually is just gonna be part of it. So we'll just do it like this. In fact, we'll get, no, we won't do that. Okay, fair enough. That's what security looks like now. That's how security's gonna, it's gonna be that way. Put it like this. And I think that this will all go away eventually, but for now it's gonna exist so it has that little special color coding. That's helpful for us. Do we want security leaving to also have some kind of thing? Like red? Get the hell, get, get the heck out of here. So I guess that kind of looks nice as a, as a sign that people, you know, it's a red, red like an exit sign. Okay, wow, I see the video is way over on time. I think we're doing okay on this airport. Probably missed a couple of things, but look, the, the important thing is, one, we're making money, and two, we're making progress. So it may not be good money, it may not be good progress, but the trend is upward, and that's, ah, well, that's something, I guess. Until the next one, thanks for watching, stay safe, and take care.